You're tuned in to the BAM Biz Talk Podcast, where we explore the thrilling world of entrepreneurship through the eyes of successful business owners themselves. I'm your humbly eccentric host, Angel Garcia, co-founder of the BAM Entrepreneurial Center. Each episode, we delve deep into the unique stories of entrepreneurs who've navigated the ups and downs of the business world to give you the opportunity to learn from both their triumphs as well as their challenges, providing actionable insights to propel your own entrepreneurial journey. So let's dive in and walk the path of entrepreneurship together. Welcome to the BAM Biz Talk Podcast, your beacon for building business success. Well, cool. Mr. Brian Stubbs. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. It's a pleasure <laughs> to have you here. So, uh, you know, you're a, a man of many, many, many uh, experiences. Here. <laughs> that just means I made a lot of bad decisions. And had to fix it. That's all that means, by the way. <laughs> so this is a show about entrepreneurship. Yes. So right on. <laughs> That's what entrepreneurship is. is <laughs> Being successful and making bad decisions. So especially yeah. when you're trying to grow and everything, that's well, all you do is make decisions and fix the ones that aren't good. There you go. You're just making so, decisions and making decisions to correct yeah. the decisions. Yep. It's all decision making. Yes. Trying to keep things moving. So how do you make decisions? I, like I said, we know this. Um, I'm actually an engineer by training and I did kind of what I call hard, hardcore engineering for about 13 years. So that's all engineers really do when you're in the mix. Um, I did product development. So that's all it is, is, is this idea better than this idea? And Seriously, the first 10 years of my career, the company I worked for spent a lot of money teaching me how to make decisions better. Um, but again, you also realize that making a decision is better than standing still a lot of the time. Ah, that's and so point, yes. making a bad decision is is fixable. Standing still is not, right? Mm. And, that's, and I think that's what I've learned from going from an engineer to an entrepreneur is just keep things moving. Even if it's in the wrong direction for a little while, if you're willing to admit it's a bad mistake or wrong decision and fix it, Go forward and see what happens. Yes. So, ah, oh, that's beautiful, right? Because, like you were saying earlier before we started here, the quote from Patton. Yes. Right. Yeah. You know yes, what, go, what was it? Um, I don't ever get it right, but it's the, the most valuable thing before an event or an invasion is a plan, and the most worthless thing during a, an event or an invasion is a plan. It's a plan because you need to right. regroup and rethink and right as soon as you make a plan. It's like a constant plan the plan is yes. always alive and going you got to yes. keep it moving you know yes. and that's interesting because when i teach people how to put together a business plan that's the whole concept of it right you yep. get the plan so you can get on the road yes right but once you're on the road nothing's gonna be the same but yes you, at least you have a structure to go by yes the guidelines and actually i just finished i just presented mine to my team yesterday and i call it a roadmap because it's not a plan it's um i don't remember i think there's 52 line items on our roadmap for our little company. And every one of those needs a plan and needs to be thought through and, right. and thought of, is, is it really viable? Is it needed? Is it a priority? Uh, so it is a roadmap. And I told them all in that meeting that you're going to take up a couple of steps and take a wrong turn and correct. And that's why it's not a staunch plan. It's a roadmap. It's, right. it's revolving and evolving as we go. You know, like um, the way ships are navigated, mm -hmm. the way airplanes get from point A to point B, it's not a straight line. No, it's not, never a straight you line. You show it on the map, <laughs> right? Straight yep. line, but they're constantly having to correct. Yes. Constant. It's a constant correction. So, I mean, that's a real uh, close analogy to a, yep. a small business. Yes, because everything's always changing. Always. Yes. So. Right? The, the ink doesn't, doesn't never gets a chance to dry. <laughs> right. Before yeah. you have to add on some more. Uh, yes. Just continuously keep going and going. Totally so, agree. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> that's awesome. That yeah, I, I like that. So let's you, Eric Compressor Solutions. Yes, you, you just called it a small company, but it's not a small <laughs> company. And you know, my my wife wife hits me in the shoulder every time I say small company, and yeah. I'm really trying not to say it. And I, I thought I was trainable, apparently. <laughs> well, why are you? You're gonna get another slap. Right? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we started off as a small company. I think is what I should say. So. Well, there, yeah, that's a story. Huh? <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, uh, we talked about this earlier. We just opened our fifth location. Nice. Uh, wow. We're at about 92 employees today. Awesome. When I started in 2015, we were about 13 or 14 employees. Wow. Um, in one location. So that's in our path. So that is the definition of small company. Right? Yes. <laughs> and technically, you know, they say a small company, uh, under 500 or something like uh, it that. It depends on which article you read. But yeah, yeah. Usually yeah. under 100. So I still say we're under 100, but it, it's not going to be very long. I don't think till we're over 100. So awesome. Awesome. Get so, in there, huh? Yes, sir. So. Well, congratulations on that. Yeah, thanks. It's I know this, yeah, it's fun, right? But it's not easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, because like we're saying, there's a whole lot of decisions that had to be made to get you to store number five. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, uh, 
and again, it's never a straight path. That's a great analogy. It's it's we haven't been a straight path ever, I ever. Think, at our company. <laughs> <laughs> and you throw in a couple COVID years and you know things mm. like that. And hey, you know we're just trying to make things interesting. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> let's not do that one again. Though. So how did tell us how did you even get to air compressor? What's your background? So, so you said hardcore engineer. Yeah, well, you know, and, a lot of and hardcore for me means I hung out with people that are all smarter than me for a long time. Awesome. Um, That's a perfect place to be. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Um, I grew up in southeastern New Mexico, uh, went to, in Roswell, I uh, went to New Mexico State and got my mechanical engineering degree. Um, and again, you kind of just never know what life's going to throw at you. So I had a job offer to go to work and be a design engineer for Boeing, um, and they had my graduation date wrong. They thought I was going to graduate in May of 2001, and they sent me a job offer. And I said, I'm not going to graduate till December 2001, and they said, we'll just change the date. September 11th happened. Uh, my boss, I, I was literally talking to my manager, and he's like, I wouldn't move up here. Wow. <laughs> so, again, senioritis, senior, yeah. <laughs> senior in college, my yeah. grades weren't quite where they should have been <laughs> if I wanted to go find a job. Um, so, you know, you had to hustle, and I had to pull up my grades. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, it was kind of weird. I couldn't pay attention to what was going on in the world because my, my head get find a job yeah. and get my grades up. And uh-huh. um, So, actually, I did a co-op with Cummins in your company, and they had an opening. Um, so, I went, instead of going to cool places like Seattle. I went to Clovis, New Mexico after I graduated. <laughs> it's, it's a place. It's, it's Again, it's not a straight path where I wanted to go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I worked there for a little over a year, year and a half, and they moved me to their headquarters up in Indiana and spent about nine years there developing, testing uh, engines. Uh, I was a Six Sigma guy, so I mm. trained in processes yeah. and some decision-making skills and yeah. things like that. And uh, honestly, I kind of worked myself up and I had a I am the prize of what job I wanted and got to that point and I started, you know, watching what that job really was. And it's called a technical project leader. And you really just go to all the meetings and make sure everybody's playing well together okay. on a technical level. Yeah. So, you know, is this guy design something that hits another part or mm, right. Or does this one have this temperature range and the next part has a lower temperature range and this right. one cause a problem. Make sure so, all the different uh, boxes yes. talk to each other. It's a really cool job, but then I realized it's about 50 hours a week of meetings. And that's just not me. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. So uh, meetings to have meetings to make sure well, you, you had to go to meetings. all the meetings and be the right. person that said, Hey, in the meeting two days ago, they said this and like that's the job. Oh wow! Um, and it, okay. it was kind of like a coordinator of technical knowledge, but yeah. And it was like I said, it's really challenging and a neat thing. But man, it was sitting in meetings all day, every day. Mm-hmm. So I decided to go work for a uh, startup company out in Arizona. And uh, real simply, if you kind of can picture a, a eighteen wheeler, everything that touches diesel fuel, we were taking off and putting natural gas on it. So okay. from the fuel tank to an injector. So again, super technical work. Um, grew that team to about 50. I started off as by myself, team of one. Grew wow. that to about 50 people and did some really neat stuff. And wow. as most startups didn't go well at the end, so I decided to, me and my wife decided to move back to Midland, a little closer to home. Yeah. Um, and then I worked for a company doing uh, project planning and things like that for a uh, gas compression market. And just wasn't a good fit. It, it wasn't challenging for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and project management is not really my <laughs> things I'm best at. Um, so I started talking to the owner of Air Compressor Solutions. They were friends with my in-laws and talked to him about it. Literally uh, over a, a beer and sitting underneath a tree at a vacation, we all went together. We decided to go ahead and he was looking for a way to exit and I was looking for something else to do. And so uh, I started ACS as the rental manager and did that for about a year and then general manager for about a year. And I was able to purchase it at the end of 2017. Wow. So okay, and then it's been a roller coaster ever since. <laughs> <laughs> it started off smooth and yeah. nice with the beer yeah. and under the tree. Yeah, and, you know? <laughs> and like a great relationship with the previous owner. He yeah. taught me a lot and kind of took me under his wing for three or four years. And ah, that's so that was <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you had no idea of what you know yeah. you're going to get into. Well, you he had forty years of knowledge. Why oh, would you not? Wow, keep him around. And again, we met for a long time. And yeah, actually, one of my success points, and I don't know if he's ever heard this. Um, was we had a meeting one day where we went over, you know, plan and financials and that kind of stuff. And he goes, man, Brian, I don't understand any of this business anymore. It's all changed and grown. And I was like, I, I see that as a bad thing, but I also see that as a good thing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, in what, four years, everything had changed and grown and we're doing it a different way. And again, customers are demanding different things and yeah. we, we adapted. And I thought that was a really neat kind of transition for our business. That was, 
just from a you know broad outside perspective, that's probably the what saved the company. It, that's the best thing that could have ever happened for Air Compressor Solutions. Yes. Hey there, bookworms and knowledge seekers. Ever wished you could find everything you need in one place? Look no further than the Ector County Library. We're not just about books, though we've got plenty of those, from the latest page turners to classic favorites. We're talking free high-speed internet, tech classes to boost your skills, and awesome programs for all ages. Kids can dive into storytime adventures, teens can hang out and study, and adults can join book clubs or learn something new. There's always something exciting happening at the library. So whether you're a student looking for homework help, a job seeker needing resources, or just someone who loves to learn, we've got you covered. Swing by your local Ector County Library and see what we're all about. It's more than just books. It's a whole world of possibilities. Ector County Library. Your adventure starts here. The BAM Biz Talk Podcast is brought to you by our sponsor, Pachuco's Restaurant. Craving authentic and eclectic cuisine in Midland? Well, Pachuco's has you covered. Located in downtown Midland at the ever so legendary and iconic historic building at 316 North Big Spring Street, Pachuco's blends rich and unique flavors in a conveniently pleasant and vibrant atmosphere. Enjoy the highest quality barbecue, savory tacos, burgers, and a variety of other mouth-watering dishes that reflect the spirit of a true Pachuco cuisine. Real, authentic, and just plain different. Check out their menu at www.pachucos432.com or call 432-218-8806 to inquire. Or better yet, just show up and get your shine on at Pachucos, where heritage, exquisite taste, and hospitality come together for an unforgettable dining experience. Pachucos, Midland, Texas. Now back to the show. You know, uh, because so much, especially what we're getting into now, right? The world of AI. Right? Yes, all of that. <laughs> you stuff. know, then you combine that with, uh, you know, the, the older generation kind of already at that point to where they're going to start retiring. Yes. You know, they've been hanging on, you know, because, you know, the world is so crazy. They're like, oh, I better keep working, you know. So <laughs> we, we know why they're, they're still working, yeah. but at a certain point, you know, it's just going to have to. And I think we're in that kind of that zone where the technology, it's, you know, it's been advanced yes. for several decades pretty strongly. But here now, it's, a, it's another level yes. of advancement. It's like, uh, you know, the Internet coming online. Or, no phones. Or, yeah. Yeah. Something completely yeah. alien that 100 years ago was magic. I would say even 20 years ago, it was you know only in sci-fi books, right? Right. And we're living it right now. We're so living it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Both reasons, you know, some generations are like, this is scary. But then, like, to me, this is exciting. Yes. You know, this is where, this is what we've been waiting for. Oh, <laughs> yeah. all the sci-fi novels and Star Wars and Star Trek. I'm still yes. waiting on flying cars, but we'll, <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. You know, the, the man that could have done the Elon, he was like, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. not going to happen. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. But he said the best way, is, why go up when we go down? Yes. Like, ah, yeah. okay, yeah. why not? Let's bore some tunnels. Yeah, let's go do it. <laughs> but, yeah, it's a... Uh, Customer base has changed. The you know oil and gas and the other markets that we're in. I mean, mm -hmm. they're all becoming more advanced. Yeah, and uh, you know that's that is you've got to grow with them to, to keep the customers sure. right. You know, and if I were you know in my older age, 60s, 70s, and had a company and I saw all of this coming, I'm, I'm going to sell. Yeah. I'm looking to sell. You know, yes. hopefully my <laughs> ready. And if they're not, I'm looking to get out and sell. And hopefully, mm -hmm. and I would want my company to stay alive. Yep. So it's a blessing to find somebody like you, like to be able to like, yeah, sure, I'll take yeah. that on. But not just like the go get, but you also have a lot of technical knowledge. Yes. And yeah. experiential, you know, uh, basis that can what's gonna help you in there. Yeah, and again, I, I I've never really been a businessman and, and that's kind of a weird thing. And you yeah. know, don't tell the bankers that when you go in for a loan <laughs> that I'm not a business guy. But again, I think that's what entrepreneur is. You, you, the skills you have uh -huh. and you grow those and you find people that do the skills you don't have. Absolutely. Um, and that's, that's how you grow in my opinion. And that is how you grow. You know, so Absolutely. I've, I've got a great group of people that work for me and I work with, they're all awesome, but very few of them have the same skills I do. For sure. Um, and, and a lot of them are smarter than I am and way better at their jobs than I'll ever be. Um, and that's how you grow. Like that's. Don't spend your time on the stuff that you're not good at. <laughs> right. Right. No, no, yeah, I've heard that before, right? Lean into your, your strengths. Yes. You know, if it's a weakness, 
you're just going to spin wheels trying to be good at your weakness. Mm -hmm. And then you just kind of left your strength sitting there yep. idle, right? So let's talk about, you know, putting together a great team, you know, like the hiring process, not the actual process, but what do you look for when you hire? I know something that you're not good at, yep. if you can outsource to them, really, because you're buying back your time. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, do your Superman thing running the business. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Superman. I like said we, we go up and down a lot. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like I said, building a team's a little different. So... You know, when I think when I first started, we really hired on on or, or ability, um, and even in the last maybe two years, we've really changed. Is it's if you have the knowledge, but if you have the right attitude, we can teach you the knowledge, or you can go learn the knowledge. Yes, um, and that's been a pretty big shift for us. Um, I, I wouldn't say we're great at it yet, but we're definitely trying to say, man, if you got the right abilities or the right attitude, we can teach you the abilities. And you know, now when we we interview, especially managers and, and director level people. Um, we have hard conversations before we uh, extend an offer of, we are a growing company. This is what we've done and this is what we plan to do. And growth is hard. Yeah. And, and you can't be sedimentary, you can't be stationary. You've got to got to keep moving. And that's really what the job is, is to stay moving. Yeah. Um, and you're going to hit a brick wall some days and we're going to have to sit down and talk about it and figure out what to do. Um, and again, I think my team now has really embraced that of, hey, here's a problem, we're going to go fix it. And, and not problem solving very much anymore they are, which is awesome. Yes. <laughs> um, but finding a team that's willing to take that on mm -hmm. um, is pretty amazing. Those are really the people that kind of change our business quickly is ah. you know, even even no knowledge can come in with the right abilities or the right attitude and say, we're going to go figure this out. Right. So. Because it's, it's that drive. Right? Yes. You know, and, and I, it's kind of taken to say, taking ownership, even though they're not owners, yes. right? It's, it's taking ownership of where you're at. Yes. And what you do, right? Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you're the same way. Even when you were an employee, you know, getting a regular paycheck for somebody else, you took ownership of that position. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's what you're looking for, like a, a team of owners. Yes. You know, who's going to come in and say, all right, how, how can I problem solve today and attack this and, and move the company forward and also be a, t a good teammate? Yep. You know, working with the overall. And, and again, I, I was I was very lucky. Cummins was an amazing place to work, um, and they really did. If if you took ownership and you were growing, they kind of let you do whatever you wanted to. Mm -hmm. I worked there for about ten years. I think I had nine job titles in ten years. Oh wow! Uh, but and again, there's <laughs> think back to high school. All the kids that you didn't know in high school that were really good at school, those are who worked <laughs> worked with. Um, very intelligent people. Um, Cummins had a really kind of knack for hiring extroverted engineers. And so you had a lot of people that were well-spoken and very intelligent, and very knowledgeable that I kind of just hung out with all day. And I mean, it didn't take long at all as an engineer to say, hey, you know, you can either take the technical path or the managerial path. And I was like, man, all these guys are so much smarter than I am. I, I just can't. I got to figure out how to be a good manager. And wow. Cummins really helped foster that idea. Yeah. Uh, they kind of did say, hey, you're a better manager than you're a technical guy. Let's take you a couple classes. Let's give you a manager. Um, I was a manager when I was 29. Almost everybody on my team was older than I was on my first team. Ah, um, okay. And again, that's so that, an interesting dynamic. It, right it, there. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> but they really kind of put you in those hard situations because you're willing to own it and be accountable for it. And if you're willing to do kind of those two things, they let you do whatever you want it. Mm. And uh, my short story about coming is I started off as a very mechanical guy. I started working on engines that didn't have any electronics. They had mechanical governors that were designed in the 50s. And I was really good at tuning and understanding how a mechanical governor that was 50 years old worked. Yeah. At the end of my career, I was managing software engineers. And they, they let me go through that progression and uh -huh. go, you know, the totally other end of the, the right. engineering world. Yeah. All because I just took accountability. And, and I worked hard and, and built good teams. Yeah. So. I mean, so... That you really got your training to be a business owner. Oh yeah, through that. It, yeah. But and again, I think that my advice to everybody is: you never know when you're going to get that training. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think, you know, a Fortune 200 company that had 40,000 employees when I was there. Yeah, uh, working with an amazing pe group of people that outshined me in almost every aspect. But they were able to see, hey, let's go teach you how to do this, mm -hmm. and and really foster that. And it's it's worth think back that that big company helped me be a better decision maker and entrepreneur and learn how to take risks and 
that kind of stuff inside a big right. company because that's not what you hear. That's not what you do. <laughs> right. That's not what we think. Yes. Say, oh, huge conglomerate, monolithic. You know, they're going to yeah. be micromanaging everything. I'm right? just going to sit at my desk all day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. That, that's a that beautiful thing. And it speaks to uh, why they've been around so long. Yes. You know, on two aspects. One, they make an incredible product. Yeah. Right. The best out there. B- better since I left. But. <laughs> 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 you know, um, but that's how they become so good at things. Yeah. They allow their people because they know their strength is their people. Yes, yes. And like that's a, that's a really that's a golden nugget for for entrepreneurs out there, right? Mm-hmm. You're only as strong as your people. Yes, right. You know, because if you're the solopreneur and you think you're doing everything on your own, maybe for a little while. Yep. You know, but if you <laughs> have any plans at all for growing, you need a team. I agree. You know, and you got to invest in your team. And, Very much so. <laughs> you know, in, in all aspects, right? There, There is, of course, the monetary, all right? You know, you got to pay them well, you know, the, the benefits and everything. You got to make sure that they're secure in yeah. life. You know, but then there's the other contributions, you know, like the team building, uh, the, you know, you've, you've had to be a counselor, mm-hmm. I'm sure, along the way. Every day. <laughs> sure, but you're looking at more than just uh, their physical self. You know, you're looking up for their emotional and, and their psychological and how they operate. Because if they're at their best when they come in, well, your company's doing the best it can be. You know, then we get to yeah. uh, make bad decisions and then, <laughs> together. Yeah, to correct those decisions to make well, more decisions. And again, especially um, you know, especially after COVID, I guess the the love of our employees has changed. Also, one of the one of the things we say as a leadership team is we never know what people go home to. We, but we need to take that into account because yeah. it's it's for us, right? It, right? Work is only you know a third of your life, um, right. and so. We, we try to build those relationships so we can know what's going on. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, we probably have had half a dozen employees that were just rock stars. And then over a short period of time, sometimes days or weeks are no longer a rock star. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, at first we're like, oh, well, they don't care anymore. They don't, you know, right. they don't understand the business. And, you know, we've really trained ourselves to take a step back. When, why were they successful? And then all of a sudden not. Right. Has anything changed at work? And usually the answer is no. Okay, managers the same, positions the same, customers mm-hmm. are the same, teams the same. Yeah, let's go figure out what's going on and see if we can help these people. And and that I think how you build teams is Absolutely. got to kind of extend the arm or be the empathetic one and say, mm-hmm. hey, wait a second, what's going on? This doesn't make sense. Right. And and you'd be amazed how quickly people react positively to mm-hmm. that. That um, our HR group right now is amazing. Our our director is an amazing person, but she's that person. She's like, hey, wait a second, you were really good two weeks ago. What's going on? And she'll go to their office, sit down, and have yeah. an amazing conversation. Yeah. Um, we can figure it out. And again, as soon as we have the information, we can figure it out. Hey, mm-hmm. go take a couple days off. Go fix this. Or, right. hey, yeah, we'll, we'll let your work schedule so you can come in at nine because you got to do something. Yeah. Uh, and those, uh, unfortunately, I think those, once you have that information, those problems are easy to solve. They just, right. Because they'll tell you what they need, and you just need to listen and figure it out. That's the key. Yeah. Right. And <clears throat> being able to listen. And not just here. Yes. Right? You know, um, because it's not a us versus them thing, you know, it's a team. Yeah. You know, it's a, if we're all on the, if as much as possible on the same page, mm-hmm. working through this, then yeah, sh- you know, we can fit. Yeah. Like you said, easily yeah. take, come in later, take a couple of days off, whatever, what, what's it going to take to help you out, get you back on track? Well, and, and again, I, I, especially now that I'm kind of, I'm not in the day to day anymore because we're 90 people and I can't be. Um, but now you start seeing things a little bit differently too, which the measure of our, of that success of that story is actually how the team members react. So when somebody's having a bad day, uh, or bad, something's happening in their life and they're not performing, you know, when the team reacts and supports, that's when, you know, you've, you've got it working. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of, it's kind of a, a second measure, I guess, but yeah. that's the one that really matters. So, <clears throat> so the rest of the team will step in. Yes. That you- that's, that's the real measure. That's, uh-huh. I think that's the goal of Absolutely. If this person needs a week off for some personal. I don't know what it is, but I'll I'll say and do this. Right. right. I'll step up. Yeah. That's that's you know, pretty easy. People, yeah. Because no, because everybody knows they feel comfortable that hey, when I got to be out, I know they're going to step up to fill my position. That I can feel secure in yeah. that. Right. So while I'm here, I'm giving them my all. Yes. Yes. It's teamwork. Um, again, you just expect to be repaid if you ever need to be repaid, and that's all you ever expect from it. For sure. You know, and that that <laughs> echo. That eliminates the the buildup and the possibility of like animosity. Yes, or any, you know if, if you know if tension comes up, it can easily be dissolved. You know, it's just it's just like living in a family. Yeah, yeah. you know, there's going to be heads to butt. There's going to yeah. be disagreements. You know, but hey, it's all work outable. 
Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the theory. You spend a third of your life at work. Why, why don't you make it like a family or friends? And why not? You make it part of your life. And right. You're, you're going to be there. <laughs> yeah. So creating so, a, a large company, right? Like on scale of Cummins, right? You said 40,000 employees. I think that's what it was when I left. Yeah. That has a, a, a culture that cultivates that, you know, it kind of allows you to take a piece of that and create your own. Yep. You know, and truly you started as a small business. 13, what you said, 13, 13 people? 14, I think I was number 14. People? You, oh, you were number 14. I think I was number 14. So, yeah. <laughs> you took over 13 people under you. Yeah. Right? Just, hey, hey, hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And a lot of those people had been there for 20 plus years. Mm. Again, longer than I had almost been alive at the time. You know, you, you <laughs> yeah. got to think about how you talk and change and grow. And, right. Um, well, you experienced it as a, as a young man uh, managing all these older yeah. engineers. Yes. Um, you know, we know how engineers are. That's not <laughs> like, you know, accountants and, no, and service managers. It's a very different uh, outlook of life, I guess. Extremely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, that, that was more uh, grounds for you to, you know, mm-hmm. learn it and, and put it together. Yes. And, and again, applying their knowledge to a new problem too, right? Because they knew the business a lot better than I did, uh, yeah. knew the customers better than I did, and trying to get they were going to change what they were resistant to just because they hadn't in a while. Mm-hmm. But you have all the knowledge. Let's go figure out how to apply your knowledge to this change. Right. Uh, I mean, unfortunately, it didn't work with all. Some people were like, sure. no, I'm not changing. Um, but most of them were like, okay, yeah, we can go figure this out. Yeah. And, and let's go try to do this and look at what this looks like. And, right. Um, and that's what me- you're doing. You're, you know, you're, you're not the dictator out there saying, yeah. Rah, but, you know, you say, hey, guys. Let's do this. And right, whoever comes along, well, that's your team. That's yep. who wants to come along. And if they don't, well, that's that was choice. And that's how they... Yep. You know, but and overall, it's better for your business because now you have a cohesive. Yes. All right, like a, a goal. Yes. Right? Like the whole putting the plan together. Well, it's and, the analogy I was always taught is you know make sure the right people are on the train so you can go in the right direction. Uh, Somebody doesn't want to get on the train. There's not you force them on the train. Right. But if you say the train's going from here to here, this is how we're going to do it, um, and they say yeah, put them on the train and let's let's get going. Let's figure so, this out. So, but if people choose not to, that's again I. It's hard to get emotionally attached to them, but if they choose not to, then there's really not a whole lot you can do. Right. Um, and, and again, that's their choice. And, you know, yeah. that's nothing you can do about that. No, but, you know, it, it, it works out because say that you did force them on the train, well, it's not yeah. going to be a very pleasant ride. No, not you at know? all. If yeah. You're not going to get to where you're trying to get to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, they have a chance to make it bad, a bad for everybody, right? Right. And it's better for them. Um, there's lots of books that say, you know, Letting somebody go out of an environment that doesn't, doesn't fit them, it's better for them than anybody else. And, right. And uh, fortunately, we've had to do that a few times. I never like it. But, no. But no. again, you go see them go into a new place and, and be successful. And that's that was the right decision for everybody. That's when you know. Yeah. Yeah. So you've had to gone through, you know, five stores now. Yes. We opened so, up our fifth branch in April. Your first one was here in Odessa? Yeah. So the main branch is in Odessa. It's been there since the mid 80s. And so that's where ACS has been forever. Yeah. Um, in 20. 20- 18, we opened up Amarillo. Um, again, we, one of the things we say at ACS is we're really good at making bad decisions. Uh, we decided we awarded the territory of all of New Mexico and El Paso okay. in June of 2020 during COVID. Oh, wow. Okay. And we decided, you know what? We're going to go ahead and open up an, an El Paso branch during COVID and see if we can get it open. So when COVID's over, it'll be there and yeah. ready to go. Um, horrible decision. <laughs> you know, we were trying to go up to El Paso when they were having outbreaks. Like you couldn't find a hotel room. You could no ah, restaurants were open. Yeah. Um, trying to look at properties was unreal. Like we went to look at a property and the other real estate agent came in and he opened the building, turned on all the lights. He went and sat in his car. He made us wait 20 minutes to let the air out, clear oh, out, whatever. Wow. Then we were allowed to go in and then we had to come out. And then the other real estate agent went in, closed everything up. And then we called each other while we were parked in cars next to each other to talk about the property. It was, wow. but it, I mean, it's a three or four hours to see a, yeah. a building yeah. when usually you just walk in, look around, walk out. Right. But wow. it was just kind of overcoming those hurdles. What a crazy so, time we went through. Huh? Yeah. And trying to run a small business and open a branch was just, it, it was enlightening, but like not, not really political, but just how people react to the situation. Yeah. Um, and so we were also trying to get like a remote team in Albuquerque and one of my craziest things ever, I've been, my mother's from Albuquerque, I've been going there my whole life, but eight o'clock on a Tuesday morning on the interstates of Albuquerque in 2020, there's no one on the interstate. I remember going a little over speed limit um, and people passing me because there's five of us on the interstate. Uh-huh. Usually there's 5,000. 
I mean, it was yeah. it looked like a scene out of the movie. Mm-hmm. But just how that city locked down, um, and then it changed their culture, and it, it's it's coming back. Yeah. But trying to get people to you know remote work and try to interview people and everything else was just really a weird situation. Yeah. So. Yeah. Entrepreneurs and small business owners, are you searching for ways of taking your business to the next level? BAM is your answer. We specialize in crafting high-performance marketing strategies that put your brand front and center right in the palm of your customers' hands. Not only can we create a premium website full of features that optimize your social media and digital marketing presence, but we ensure that your brand gets multiple views from your target audience and even those visiting your competition. BAM is your go-to solution in the Permian Basin. But we're not just about digital and social media marketing. We're a one-stop shop offering a spectrum of services, including business mentorship, strategic planning, market research, and access to capital. That's right. We can get you funding to expand your business. With BAM, you're not just getting a service. You're gaining a partner committed to your growth for the life of your business. So why wait? Kickstart your journey to success today. Call us to set up a free consultation and discover how BAM can help your business soar above the rest. 432-247-8840. Call today and get your business launched. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that, that <laughs> is a very odd time in our history. We started BAM. At the beginning of the pandemic, I think I remember you telling me that. Yeah, I walked <laughs> off my job February twenty eighth, twenty twenty. You know, <laughs> good, good timing. <laughs> I mean, perfect. You know, you know. <laughs> two weeks later, yeah, all businesses are shut down yeah. mostly. You know, yeah. When and when your whole business is other businesses, yes. well, like you couldn't get in, you couldn't go to banks. I mean, we didn't meet yeah. with our bankers. We didn't yeah. meet with you know our vendors. We didn't meet with anybody that year. No, so yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah, wild times, you know. So just to to have to survive through that yeah. as a business is is one thing, you know. Open up a whole other branch <laughs> during that time. Get not smart is <laughs> <laughs> so. What was the decision that corrected that decision? <laughs> we just kept on doing it. Um, we kind of said, hey, if we can get a good team in place and El Paso comes back alive, we yeah. need to be there and be ready to go. Yeah. Uh, so we just kind of put our heads down and went. Um, actually, if I remember correctly, I think. We, we did a kind of a small layoff. It was mostly retirees um, mm. in like April of 2020. But I think for the year, we actually grew employees because we grew El Paso and Albuquerque a little bit. So it was yeah. kind of a weird year for us. Uh, so y'all opened up so, two stores during the pandemic. Well, we opened up one store and then we had like a remote team. So we had a, oh, a, okay. a salesman and a technician in Albuquerque gotcha. working out of a storage unit, ah. you know, kind of a remote team setup. Oh, so, okay. And do you have a location there now? Yes, we do. Okay. So we opened that in 2021. That was so, location number three. Yes. No, four. No, so, four. Yeah, it was Odessa, the name of the El Paso. Amarillo. Albuquerque. Ah, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So Amarillo was... Uh, 2018. 2018. Okay. Yeah. And you took over 2017. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we got started. That's quick. <laughs> so in um, 2018, we actually bought the building next to us to make a rental department because they were kind of intertwined in our parts department. And mm. it was confusing to us and very confusing to our customers who was who. So... The building next door to us came for sale, so we opened up that and Amarillo within like three weeks of each other. If I remember. So again, we make bad decisions, but we work through. <laughs> that was a lot for a little company. I think when you're saying bad <laughs> decisions, then you're saying that's just the most difficult decision. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of one of those things. We sit down as a team, and we're just like, hey, "Okay, can we buy this building and open a branch at the same time?" And everybody's like, "Yeah, that seems right." And then we get into it, and we're like, oh, that's going to be a little uh, tough. <laughs> and we get like halfway into it, we're like, "Okay, this is really hard." <laughs> okay, let's regroup. Let's think about it. Right. And again, like when you talk to people outside ACS, they're like, that's crazy. Why would you do that? And we're like, because it wasn't, we it, all agreed. It made sense. <laughs> I said yes. I said yes. Yeah. No, but it, while you were there in that moment, right, to making that decision, yeah. it made sense. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at the customer base and the, biz- the business and, and our goals and our plans, it was almost a have to do. Um, so we sat ah. down and figured it out. Right. So. See, now, now that's, that's, a, that's a beautiful point, right? right? It's a have to do. Yep. Right. We have to do this. We're going to continue. Yes. Right. So, and if we don't do this, then what do we do? Right. We, like you said, just can't sit. You can't stay idle. And that's, that's really the El Paso. El Paso is a great example of that because there's competitors. There's good competitors in El Paso. And we really said, you know, if we wait till the uh, COVID is over, they're way ahead. They're already of us. coming back. Because they, they already have a fit. They already have a location. Mm-hmm. They already have employees. They already have a name. Um, so if we start now and get a location, some business and get start advertising, we'll be about equal 
but mm. I think we'll have momentum because we were building, building during COVID right. and they were they were stagnant. Stay idle. Um, and so that was a decision. Yeah. And on a business sense, it makes a lot, a of, sense. lot of sense. On an operational one, yeah. That, yeah, <laughs> so, no, for sure. But no, that's, you know, because y'all are looking at the big picture. Yeah. Right. In the, in the long term picture. Right. right. And that's, that's, that's where I make decisions from, right? I think every small business owner has to look at the vision. Be, be the visionary, right? Yep. Because if you're, if you're the guy, if you're the captain, you're, you're driven to horizon, right? right? And everybody else is is helping to get there all together. Yep. Right? So, yeah, I mean, when, when you're making that decision, it's, it's this is how we got to go, and then you can figure it out, right? It's like, okay, you set your plan. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't then you throw it away. <laughs> you throw it, get thrown away as soon as you get in it. It's like, oh, we did we say yes to this? Yep. Do you agree to that? Yeah. Well, just, that's how we start most of our meetings. Is this still the right thing? Is this still the right path? Oh, yeah. I think it, yeah. It, yeah. The business end still makes sense. Let's go yeah. figure it out. It might delay us a month or it might be harder or do something like that, but let's go figure it out. So when you have a meeting with, with your, I guess your, uh, your executive, yep. right? Do you, uh, do you let them go first and everybody air out and then you have a voice yeah. in it or how's that? Yeah. So we kind of did a restructure, um, about a year and a half, two years ago. So um, we're following what's called the EOS system, which is the entrepreneurial entrepreneurial operating system. And it's got kind of a neat structure that, that we kind of agree to. So I, I needed to get out of the business just because we're rowing the day-to-day and out of the, out of, out of the day-to-day. Yeah. So their simple structure is you have a visionary and then you have um, an implementer and then you have your leadership team. And so that's kind of how we're yes. now. So I have one direct report. Um, and so my job is to really look and watch the company and watch the market and watch our customers and try to steer that ship into where we need to be. Yes. Um, and, you know, the, the EOS system has a lot of examples, but the Steve, I never remember the guy. No one ever remembers the second guy. But Steve? Steve Jobs had a guy working for him and he was he was the, ex, the implementer. So uh-huh. Steve would sit in articles and yeah. do technology things and then come back and say, hey, how do we do this? We'll go figure it out. Okay. How about the whiz? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you, it's a neat dynamic when you can get that work. So uh, actually our, our VP is a guy I work got at Cummins. Um, so he's, he's uh, everything operations. Yes. And yeah. I mean, we talk, we've already talked today. We talk every day of, Hey, I'm thinking, what do you think about this? And Hey, this happened. Okay. You know, do you need help redirecting or fixing. And then that goes to his team. And mm-hmm. so that our meetings and our conversations really, you know, I, I get to be silent and listen, right. which is really good as a business owner. Uh-huh. Like it's almost my job to sit there and be quiet. And yeah, I can steer the ship a little bit. Uh, like I said, I, we did our strategic roadmap yesterday. Hey, here it is. Tell me what y'all think. And so it's their job to go, hey, I'm going to think through the the nuts and the bolts in the day to day of these ideas. Yeah. And then we'll have a conversation about it. So as a business owner, it's really strange that as your team grows, you do need to be more quiet. And, and that's just a progression of their growth. Right. Right. Uh, and right. so, yeah, a lot of our meetings, I, I sit there and I listen. And like we do a business every, every Monday, um, I, I get to ask a couple of questions, but the team tells me what's going on and the team as a group, you know, they have conversations about what's going on in their departments. Yeah. Um, but it's a really neat experience to get there, just sit and listen, um, and absorb the work they're doing. That's exactly the word that was in my head when he said that absorb, you're absorbing your company. Yep. You know, and then now you feel a bit, I can imagine that you feel connected in a different way but in a more kind of like a whole list of kind of way. Yes. Yeah, very much so. And it's more of a, you kind of go from the teacher to the mentor kind of thing. Ah. Right. So I'm, I'm there to correct and steer, but not to teach. Right. You know, and, and that's, that's a really big transition, I think. And, yeah. And honestly, I kind of where we came up with this, whether we're 90 people or, or 5,000 people, I think the structure is the same. Mm. I think right now we've finally got a, a structure where you deem to have a person hopefully it's me forever, um, just sitting there thinking about how the company is run and, and where we need to go. And then a whole bunch of people trying to execute it in their you know, respective departments or, or areas of expertise. Right. So, you know, and as, as a, your company does expand, now you're up to five stores. Firstly, now you're not responsible for hiring each no. individual. Yeah. No. <laughs> but because you, you set the culture and your team yeah. with what you're looking for and now how it's worked previously and how you want to continue keep that yes. working you have to trust others very much so and that's that could be kind of hard sometimes. it is hard <laughs> and again, again uh, i'm kind of at a weird state because i'm doing a lot more of this kind of visionary planning work mm-hmm. you know so now i kind of just walk around and i don't say hey you have to fix this hey you have to fix this now i'm like hey can you go walk through the shop and make sure it's clean right and, it, and it's big difference it, it is a big difference because they're taking ownership of it but 
then you get to kind of step back and say, man, I remember when we had like four techs, <laughs> technicians in our shop, and, and yeah. now we've got 16. You know, wow. that, that's yeah. just, you know, and it's weird to walk around and see that mm -hmm. and then get to have that, you know, time to think about how do we get to 20 or 40 or 30, you know, 30 or 40 or whatever the next step is. Right. Um, and see your team doing the kind of operational stuff and taking that step back. And it's, it's really good both to see the employees growth mm -hmm. and then it's a really, it switches your mindset very quickly to be, let's think about growth. Let's think about how we get better. Let's think about um, what I need to do for my employees instead of just solving the day-to-day -day problem. Right. Um, which it, it's a hard transition, mm -hmm. but it's a great replacement. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I think what I do now is way more challenging and rewarding than doing the day-to-day -day stuff. Right. And it took me a while to realize it, but I, I think that's what a lot of leaders need to realize is yes. let go of the day-to-day -day so you can go do the really neat stuff. Right. Because so. I, I think when we're creating our company, you know, it is like our bait. Mm -hmm. right? So yep. we feel we have to be hands-on to get this right. No, this is how it's done right. This is how you do it right. You know, oh, my, you know, and you're somebody else going to do it. Okay. You know, you're like, well, let's see how this goes. But really, once you do realize, hey, letting go of that is going to be better for the company. Yep. Because you've already brought it so far. You know, I agree. And there was an article years ago. I can't. It was one of those like LinkedIn articles or something, but it it had the analogy of a company versus a kid, and it's very similar mm -hmm. if you really think about it. That yeah. you know those first two years, your your all your time is spent with yeah. that baby, right? Yeah. And make sure that take care of and learning what they need to do. Yeah. But the in the end result for both two is for them to leave you. I mean, the whole goal of parenting is for your kids to yeah. move out, right, and mm -hmm. be successful and happy. Well, I think that's the same for a business. Like, I'm not going to live forever. Right. At some point in time you know, I need to exit the business and, and I need to treat the business as the end goal is for them to be successful without me. Just exactly. like kids. Yeah. Yeah. To, to go out into to the big old yeah. crazy yeah. world yeah. And, and, and survive on their own. <laughs> Hopefully survive <laughs> and be happy. <laughs> so, but if you did, if you did your job right, if you raised a good, you know, they got, they have everything they need. They yeah. have all the tools. They have the self, uh, everything that, that they would need to survive. This, they have it. It's there. Yes. And there's nothing more rewarding as a parent to see your 30 year old kid go off and do something really cool. Right? Successful. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's the same with the business. I, I think, and again, I, um, the first couple of times I said this to my team has probably been eight years ago. I said, you're, you're, <laughs> it's a joke actually, but we say it all the time. My, my two jobs, one is to keep me out of jail. So HR, we don't do any HR violations. We don't uh -huh. do any kind of violations. We don't do any safety yeah. violations. Yeah. And if you ever ask my leaders what their one, one job is, they'll say, keep Brian out of jail. <laughs> but it's simple. It doesn't, yeah. they're, I mean, that sets the goals, right? Right. Um, the other one is, is every one of their jobs is true because that's growth. That's yeah. That's growth um, at, its, at its easiest form. Is you should all be trying to be the person that's accountable and um, working hard, like we talked about before. But that one that's growing and trying new things and, and being innovative, you know, that's, that's what you should do. So um, we talk about it, not all the time, but often, mm -hmm. you know, the whole goal of me taking over ACS was to build a team that tapped me on the shoulder and said, get out of the way, we're ready to go. Uh, yes. And, and that's, that is a, a cultural shift for a lot of people. Yes. <laughs> right. It's in, in the, you like as, as the owner, as a leader here, you have to be open to Cause if you're not, that could cause, you know, but yep. you, you come, you're stepping into this with that mentality. Yes. So that's, yep. that's, that's how that works so well. But it, it I've been, Kind of how um, scared people are when I say that. A lot of people get really scared because they're like, I don't know what that means. Like, what is he leaving? No, I'm leaving when you tell me to leave. I'm not right. leaving. <laughs> you know, it's not, I don't want it to be my choice. I want you to say, hey, I think we're ready to do this. You know, Brian, you can go off and do something else. I'll say, Brian, I think you're just holding us down yeah. on at this point. You know? Yeah. It's, and I, like I said, I think, I mean, that's that's the in conversation I want. I think that would right. be an amazing conversation to say, hey, yeah, we're ready for you to get out of the way. Let's, let's go. Uh, you know what? Yeah. Let, let a train is calling. Yeah, that's right. That's right. There's a margarita a beach somewhere. Yeah, my name splattered all across. But it, it's, that's the need with your employees, is how are you going to grow to replace me? Yes. And it's a very powerful, powerful conversation. I bet, because it, it, it would change their per perception yes. of where they're operating. Yeah, and it changes how they manage their teams, too, because mm -hmm. they realize, and if I'm going to step up, I need to have somebody. Replace me. Right, and. And so it, it, that's the kind of culture we're really trying to get. Um, that was the culture at ACS. Uh, the reason I was allowed to change jobs is because there was always a person behind me that mm -hmm. ready was to ready to go. Um, and and that was the culture there. And it was really neat to see how people progress and how the people behind them progress mm -hmm. um, and kind of made that kind of weird circle of everybody's moving jobs because we can. 
Right. So, you know, because that not only uh, it gives you more of a broad experience. Yes. And that makes just better employees, right? Mm-hmm. The more more knowledge they have, the more experience they have, the the better they are at making decisions. And I mean, it just makes a better better team and culture. Like you were saying before, when you were for all the the different teams putting together components that had to communicate with this component over mm-hmm. here to make sure everything talked together and worked together. Yep. You know, it's kind of the, it what is you're doing now. Yeah. Yep. Like I said, it's. I, I have a book, and I'm not going to write one because, again, I'm an engineer and I'm not an English guy, um, about the similarities of designing a new product versus growing a business. And, mm. and there is, like I said, you design a new product, you got to make sure everything's working together. You got to make sure everything fits. Yeah. It's the same with the people when you're growing. They got to work together. They got to fit together. Yeah. And so it's hard to articulate the, the similarities. <laughs> right. It, it's, it's, it is like a macro micro deal. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Um, because in a business, yeah, your people have to work together, but you're, you're also your product has to be right for your market. Yes. Yeah. You know, because now you have all these external factors involved. Yeah. The changing world we talked about. Changing world we talked, yeah. <laughs> right. we're, and we're having to navigate that uh-huh. on a day to day basis. Day to day. You know, especially with this AI coming out. Yep. Right. Or have you all implemented AI in any way? No. I, I'm kind of in the reading stage. I just can't figure out how it works in our business. Mm. Like when you look at a software company, you say, hey, Go write me code to do this. Like I could see that, yeah. and that's pretty um, structured, I guess. And, and so, mm-hmm. I yeah, I can see how a computer can go write you a code to go do something. Right. Uh, again, me and my buddies use it to make memes and make fun of each other, but <laughs> I don't think that's really what it was intended for. <laughs> but you know, um, I went to a conference back in April where you know a person talked about it, and I was like, okay, I just don't see. And as a small business that's again okay, always changing, trying to grow our processes. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure where it fits. I think uh, it does. Yeah. I don't, I don't I, I, it has a place. Mm-hmm. Um, we just haven't been able to kind of find it yet. Right. So. You know, it's, it's, um, and right now it's like the Cambrian explosion. Right? Everything's mm-hmm. just exploding. There are new products coming out yep. every day. You know, because I've been keeping a pretty close eye on it for a little over a year, right? Since uh, ChatGBT 3.5 yep. came out. I've been glued to it. And, Every week, there's amazing new announcements coming out. Like, oh wow, this does. Oh wow, this does. Yeah. This, you know, and then the, the expectations it's about to hit. So I can see that. How do we put any of all of this to work for what I needed to work yes. for? Right. Well, what I have is working. You know, right now. Now there's this big shiny you know, <laughs> yeah. magic wand over here. They're saying that you just do this and right. Yeah. I just can't. Implement? Like our our. Very little of our work is repetitive, I guess, because every customer is different. Every, you know, service event is different. Yeah. Um, so you can use it on kind of the process side, the reporting side mm-hmm. um, a little bit. But again, kind of what I've read and I've seen, it's hard to do. The process isn't stable. Mm-hmm. So, you know, even walking into like a fast food restaurant, right? I mean, they, yeah. they make the same hamburger and, you know, you can apply a lot of that kind of technology and knowledge yeah. to them. But I haven't quite figured out what you do if your your problem's different every time. Every time. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, I think that's the, you know, you go, you know, one of the amazing things is, you know, jobs that they think AI are going to replace, but they're all the ones that are repetitive. So mm-hmm. if it's got to have a human thought in it, right. And it doesn't fit yet. <laughs> we'll see how long that lasts. Right. And that's really hard to kind of navigate right now is Absolutely. where you implement it. So there is the, the low hanging fruit. Yeah. Right. The automation. Yes. The AI come in already there. Now, the next step is the human in the loop. All right, so they're, they're, I hope there is a human in there for a long, long We got to keep that in as long as possible. But I think that that's the secret to figuring out what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Because there, a human can see what's actually yes. going on in a physical kind of sense, right? Which that's also kind of scary because the, the AI and the camera deal. That's yeah. What, did you see that? Uh-huh. So ChatGPT came out with, uh, they did a, a uh, demo. Basically, she, they had a cell phone. That it, it, it was on their app, it hit, activated the camera, blank sheet of paper, wrote a, a simple uh, algebraic equation. Yep. And asked Chat to solve it for him. See, that's cool. <laughs> just just by vis- yeah. visualizing. So if you had cameras everywhere, <laughs> yeah, just solve it like a problem. The physical world, right? <laughs> no, but um, I, things are changing so much and advancing so quickly that I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to find a way to implement it. Yes, sooner than exactly. later. Well, and I think one of the, again, it's been probably about six months since I read this, but, you know, in the architectural world, you know, architectures used to be in high demand and maybe 20, 25 years ago, there was, it really dropped. Mm-hmm. 
And, you know, it was the reason because drafters got better and yeah. you needed less high paid architects right. and they could have four or five drafters and, and work that way. Um, but I think with AI, you could really go into AI and say, Hey, design me a building that's got this many square feet, this many bathrooms, follows the ADA code, mm-hmm. does this. You, you don't really need drafters. No. In the, and I think the media, that was one of the jobs really weirded out that you didn't need drafters anymore. Yeah. Um, so, but again, I mean, that's, that's going to change that industry and yeah. your time to do it is a lot different too. Now, mm-hmm. you know, it takes a drafter weeks to do everything and AI can do it overnight. And right. it's just a really amazing, but you still need a human to check it. Yes. <laughs> the human in the loop. Yes. You, know, gotta keep, you know how we used to talk, you know, the ghost in the machine. Yeah. yeah. Well, now it's like the human in the yeah. machine. Right? The human, human interacting yeah. with. It, so it is definitely going to... Uh, I'm a big believer in that, but for sure. Except I'm still kind of watching and trying to figure it out. And exactly how, and, and I think you're right for that because it, it is an emergent technology that even the people designing it don't know how mm-hmm. it works. Mm-hmm. That's the wild yeah. part. But they don't know how it's going to grow, right? And, right. And morph. So. And they could put, you know, they put the parameters on. Yep. Right. But in time, they don't really understand. I guess the understand is they don't understand how it came to be. Right. And where it's going from here. We just know that we can nudge it. It manipulated a little bit here and there, right? <laughs> but again, it still takes a human in, her, a human in the loop. Uh, there was an article a couple weeks ago that I guess if you typed into the Google one, I think, uh, and you said, what are the best toppings for pizza? Glue. Yeah, number three or whatever was glue. And you're like, where did that come what? from? There's an article about well, it pizza turned out glue. It was, a, um, it was a Reddit thread. <laughs> yeah. That some guy was, you know. I make the commercials look like that. <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, well, glue is glue. actually... <laughs> So you get it. Yeah. It's not where it needs to be, but right. again, it's it's pretty amazing. It is. Um, and it's changing the business world a lot. It so. is. It is changing in that this the business world. Yes. Right. It's, yes. it's the engine that drives everything. Right. Because we're yeah. this this is where we're at. Yeah. You know. So yeah, it, this AI has changed the world in massive ways that we really can't even uh, can explain right now. So yeah. like say in the five hundred years from now. We're going to be talking about <laughs> this time period, like we talk right now about like the Enlightenment period. Yes. You know, it's like the world came out of the dark ages. It's you know? All of a sudden. <laughs> all, well, yeah. And I remember like, was it when the iPhone first came out, the number of pictures taken in history doubled every 14 yeah, days was, or something like that? Something wild. But that's kind of how AI is right now, uh-huh. too. I'm sure the, the number of requests from AI is doubling at least month. I don't, I don't know. I haven't found it yet. But, yes. but you know, how fast it gets integrated into our life and it is so exponential yes. and the, the wild thing is that even before the ai buzzword came out right mm-hmm. we, we were already lots of they were already using AI. yep a lot of the products we use especially online tools mm-hmm. they were already implementing some form of ai yep but it's not until uh this like a generative you know next in, level AI in public it became very public it became public right yep. because now it now it was able to because they created these large language models that allowed the public yep non-coders to use it yes right yeah so that's really what we're seeing here is like the hugest like everybody getting their hands in it almost like a democratization of it, <laughs> it really is you know because yeah. that's now now things are happening mm-hmm. like oh wait you know you can do this oh well you know you can do this huh? well i know that's no. cool but let's go figure it out <laughs> yeah. now that you did this i want you to try this <laughs> yes because it, it leads on and it builds right. you know so i mean these these next five years right wherever yes. this leads us to is what's sculpting the next 500 years yes um and you know like there's a couple there's several types of companies right and i'm glad that you're really doing your research for how it can benefit your company specifically right because right. i think that's a big problem because a lot of these i think they were what, what was the numbers on it was like 76 percent of employees implement some form of ai in their day-to-day they, they can work, yeah right yeah you know like it's, just like that's even a lot. The chat that's a lot yeah well like i said just any process right you you can build that process in AI and have it do the work for you really right. pretty easily now. Yeah. But a lot of employees are just doing it to make their work easier. But yeah. the company it really doesn't know that the employees do yes. it. Right? Yes. So that, that's that's <laughs> where it can lead to some issues. Well, you know? the, the, the article that came out, I think it was two weeks ago, um, Indeed, I think, released an article that was, they're seeing a lot of the same resume. Very, very minute resumes. Uh, and so that's, <laughs> yeah, people are going uh, on, hey, I worked here, 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 make me a resume. Put, yeah. Put some fancy words in it. Uh, but they all, they all look very similar. Mm-hmm. And the article really was the reason we have the internet is so we can all participate at an equal level. And, you know, no, no matter where you're coming from, you can submit a resume on Indeed. But 
now everybody's submitting the same resume, the, um, the impact of referrals for large companies uh, has gone up very quickly. Yes, I can see so, that. So what's an HR person supposed to do? I've got five resumes. They all look, all the, look same. the same. And then somebody walks in my desk and says, hey, I know a guy. Here's the resume. Ah. I'm going to go. Yeah. So Because we're, we're still bound by that human connection. Yes. Yeah. Right? Still, and you want to be different. And you want to, you want the, the person that stands out. Right. But if the rest is the same. So that, it's a, that's a neat kind of weird consequence. Yeah. And I'm sure it'll very quickly. But, right. But it's, you know, you don't want to look the same and how to be unique either. Right. Because, you know, just thinking about that, like, if I were in the job market, I'd go, I'd go to AI. Hey, help yeah. me design my resume. I, I remember spending hours on my resume. Why would yeah, I? Not? Why would I spend all that time? Right? <laughs> why would I not spend ten minutes with ChatGPT? And <laughs> but I think that's a good point, right? Because you know, and I've been told, oh, AI, everybody's er, now everybody. You can't tell who's um, they're going to be able to take people up there so much mm -hmm. easier. And I was like, well, yes and no, right? So yes, we are we are already kind of suckers for yep. you know propaganda and promotions <laughs> and stuff, right? We we're that's why commercials are so effective because uh -huh. they've tapped. That human college yes. and what makes us ah, <laughs> right? But now that AI is coming along, well, this is going to raise the bar, but you're still going to be able to tell who's being lazy. Yes. You know, yeah. and so I've been following a while, and, and, and uh, I see a lot of social small businesses put their social media out. Social media has changed in the way that they're putting out, you know. Um, but if you know and you work with AI, you can spot it. You're like, yes. ah, they use AI to do that. Ah, they use AI. Oh, they're using AI. <laughs> And there's there's programs that schools are buying to to find it too. Yes, which I think is really neat. They're uh -huh. they're reverse engineering AI, which is they're using they're AI. Using AI. It feels like there's a conflict there, but you know you can the teacher can plug in their assignment mm -hmm. and you right. know they can go back to it and it'll say, hey, these are the ten things that AI would say, right? And they can look for it. Yeah, it's really interesting how it's they're using it to check itself, right? Right, and but. The, fact, the way the speed is growing, that there's another way to do it. And that's right. Super interesting. Yeah, that's the only way to keep up with that. Yes. You know, because so it's kind of like, uh, use this analogy before, um, it's like the, the law enforcement and criminals, right? Yep. Because before law enforcement didn't use to carry uh, weapons, well, criminals yep. started carrying weapons. Oh, law enforcement got weapons. Yep. Criminals got bigger weapons. Law enforcement got bigger weapons. Yes. Right? So it's, it's this Criminals happening. got really good at computers. Law enforcement got really got good at computers. computers. <laughs> it's all even, departments. What do you, yeah. What do you even take some criminals to put uh -huh. them on enforcement team to help beat the criminals, yeah. right? So, yeah. And, and now, you know, with, with the coding thing, uh, a white hacker, white yep. hat hacker, right? Yep. Would uh, try to crack your system on yep. purpose to show you where the holes are at. So now you come in and patch them up. Yep. You know? Yes. And so now that's, it's the same game just played on the, AI level, now. AI level. Yep. you know, where everything is uh, numbers, zeros, and ones <laughs> created by something that's zeros and ones. Yes. Again, there's still that human thing of we want to compete and be better, right? And that's, we're just using a different tool to do it. That's so what it is. It's going to be the same kind of setup or game either way. Yeah. So, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the back in the day, the, the one who found the just right content, a rock. Yep. To be able to shave off in the right way to create the weapon. Right. You know, yeah, that was yeah. knowledge. That was, you know, yeah. the creation of or the discovery of the management of fire. Yes. You know? same, it was the same thing. And yeah. As soon as you figured it out, your neighbors figured it out. And oh, they, they awesome. did something better. And that's on that's and evolution. on and on yep. and on. Yeah. Now yeah. we're at AI. Now <laughs> this is where we're at. <laughs> you know, in, in predicting the, the future is, you know, it's not, you know, easy or possible, I don't think. But yeah. I think overall, I think it's going to be a positive thing. Once we get through this, and it, like I said, that's how kind of most things are. Yeah. There's always a, a kind of a dark side of every yeah. every technology. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of I'm a big believer eighty percent rule. If it's eighty percent good, let's let's try it out and see let's try see it. what it is. Yeah, um, and I think that's where I'm at with AI. It's it's got some really neat, powerful tools to mm -hmm. it. There, if you watch the news, you see all the bad stuff. But yeah, that's true with any technology or any advancement. Um, right. So you you've got to kind of weed through that for sure. Um, and in like anything, what people pay attention to is is the bad stuff. Yep. Right. It's it's very rare that the, the good stuff gets called out. Say, yes. hey, look at the good it does. Right? No, it's always, oh, you need, you know, uh, nuclear power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, there is no reason whatsoever why we should not be using nuclear power across the yeah. globe. Because we had a couple accidents uh -huh. 60 years ago. Right. <laughs> like, it, what, we're still struggling. Like, wait, what do you mean our power grid went down? Yeah. <laughs> wait, we're in 2000. What? <laughs> How does the power grid go down? ERCOT just released, uh, was it yesterday, that 
expect some brownouts the next couple of weeks. We're still there. We're, uh, you see that? That's that's just that's that's silly. Yeah, it really is. You know, big technology and the knowledge to contain it. Yep. Perfectly mm-hmm. safe. Yep, I agree. There, there's, but again, you gotta you gotta go back to our original conversation. You gotta solve a problem. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta sit down and say, okay, hey, this is good and the bad. This is good and the bad. You know, people's lives are at stake. Let's let's really sit down and figure this out. Let's figure and, this out. And uh, yeah. we don't always do as well. Lars, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know <clears throat> I'm pull back, go back to sci-fi real quick. You know, um, in Star Wars, when um, Anakin is having the discussion, Future Vader is having a discussion of saying, well, we should just all like get together and, and agree. Yes. <laughs> and, and then go do that, right? You know, Queen Amida, she's like, well, that's what we do. Yeah. It just doesn't always work because of this and this. And he was like, well, they should be made to. Yes. <laughs> Hater, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> youth, right? That's probably what we all thought when we were young and teenagers. Right. Why don't we just all agree? This, so this is easy. That's the obvious thing to do, right? Yeah. Why don't we just go do it? Yeah. You know? But yeah, it's it's a, I, I, I really hope that AI doesn't fall back into the self clear is now. Yeah, and I don't, um, it's kind of one of those things. I think society has also changed a lot um, due to technology, but, you know, I, I'm kind of at the point now where once technology just gets enough momentum, mm-hmm. it kind of can't go away. Right. Um, and I think cell phones are a great example. It, you know, thinking back to, you know, Blackberry days, and, yeah. you know, it took a, took a while for that to get integrated into our lives, but American, can you live without your smartphone? I mean, it's, and I think AI is on that path. Yeah. It, it might take 20 years. Um, oh, my like cell sure. phones did, but. It's on that path. I, I think it's sooner. Yeah. I think it's sooner, right? Because iPhones are just about to get implemented with ChatGPT. Yep. Yeah. That's what Apple said this week. Yeah. So once that happens, right, it's in, yeah. and now it's in everybody's hand, yeah. regardless if you want it or not. Yes. <laughs> it's on Facebook. Meta has it. Yep. Well, Google does too. And so, now yeah. Gemini just came yep. out. Now it's, you know, now it's, it's, it's becoming ubiquitous now. Yes. Right. And people are like, oh, I don't want to mess with it, oh, but it's right here. And it's easy. Right? And it's easy. And it's it's 80 percent good right <laughs> yeah right because what you put to it i mean it's, so have you you know about perplexity uh uh-uh. so perplexity look it up and i tell everybody this all right i'm giving away some secret sauce you guys. <laughs> replace your google with perplexity okay right well this was actually before google came out with gemini but perplexity is phenomenal because it'll it'll give you the summary and in that summary it will notate its source oh for it. and it will provide all the so say if you when you just copy to yeah. paste it it will paste all the sources Automatically. Oh, so you have your adaptations. So it's like Wikipedia almost with AI. That's how Wiki- that's what makes Wikipedia yeah. so neat is you could just click on links all day and get to where you want it. Follow the yeah. rabbit hole wherever. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly. I didn't oh. think about that connection, but yeah, yeah, it is the wiki of AI. That's, that's kind of cool. <laughs> it is super cool. Check that out. Yeah, and then you can even make uh, pages based on what you've done, like like a research page. Oh yeah, almost like you're making like a little article. Yeah, and a summary of everything you just the conversation you just had. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Perplexity. It's Perplexity. pretty cool. Yeah. I, was, I, I was, haven't ran across that one yet. I need to. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You would be, I um, have a good buddy. His uh, son is uh, getting a doctorate in material science this December. And I was just having a, a good visit with him and I was talking to him about perplexity. He was like, yeah, really? I haven't heard about it. And so I well, checked this out and, and I, I'll be lying if I remember exactly what he put. He was some high level, you know, yeah. material science stuff in there. <laughs> and he, you know, he used it and he looked, Oh, oh yeah hey I've, I've i've read most of these articles yeah. that's pretty cool yeah and it's all right there on the page it's all right there and he said hunting and hunting you know uh-huh. different academic journals and you know it was easier because online but still yeah. just put it all right there for him out he said knowledge is power right so yes it's uh that's uh what we all need to do i guess huh no i, I think either way know about it yep educate yourself about it it's not going away Right. Even if it's good or bad, it's, it's not going to be. It's away. here. Yeah. The genie is out the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Nvidia isn't going out just as many times. No. Soon. No. Well, that, that's an interesting too, right? The it's, whole chip game. It's an unreal. I would love to see anybody, you know, two years ago that was in that mix trying to predict what was going to happen oh, wow. with that technology, right? That's, yeah. Uh, and again, back to the topic, that's on Petrol at its finest. Yes. That was not a big company. But 10 years ago, they were struggling, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, and just to think about how they built that team and technology and got something else else out that no one still has replicated. Right. So and now they they just became the a trillion dollar company. Yeah. The third or something like that. Yeah. So there's yeah. only a very few yeah. companies Apple, that reach that. Apple and Microsoft, I think. Are Apple, Microsoft and, and, and now Walmart's Nvidia. close, if I remember 
aggressive. Yeah. Oh, Walmart stocks. Yeah, I think that's right. Oh, okay. So I was thinking I'd be getting there. Okay. Yeah, but, I don't know. Let me go look at that. But yeah, they're they're grown so much. And, yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd love to sit. That's an entrepreneur. I'd just love to sit in a conference room yeah. and see how they work. See what see what they're looking at. Yeah. The, you know, because um, it, it's true. You know, I was in the market for a, a laptop. Yeah. I need, I need a new yeah. laptop. But I was like, wait, can't buy it now. Yeah, stuff is coming <laughs> right I, I, I don't want to buy something now and the next month you know they're dropping the first ai laptop it's like ah so i'm gonna wait a little bit before i pull that trigger but uh i'm excited for what it's gonna the computer laptop with the power of a, yeah. of a desktop basically yeah and then some and the internet yeah power of the internet yes so. you know uh, so ai i had this conversation about a year ago just randomly in a uh hot thing. oh i was in denver yeah, and uh, one of my roommates, he ended. He was a uh, doctor of quantum physics. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and so this is when AI was just you know three point five had just dropped. Yeah, you know, and you know I'm all like reading and trying to, how can I use this? How can I use this? So I'm like, yes. yeah. <laughs> so AI, quantum physics, quantum computer. I'm like, go. <laughs> and he was like, his eyes just got big. He was like, oh man, oh man. I was like, well, is that good or bad? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> You're kind of scaring me a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. And he was like, no, it the the potential is, is he, he used the word magnanimous. Huh. Yeah. Uh, hard to tell because it really could mm -hmm. go either way at this point. But the potential of whatever's yeah. coming out of this. You can, what, quantum computing is supposed to be like 10 times or uh, 30 or 40 times our computing power if you could yeah. get that to work with AI, yeah. Yeah, like on on a fractal level. Yes, you know, yeah. and now when you when you, once you start going there, the mind kind of just yeah. starts to. Well, I, yeah, then the the humans can't keep up with the technology almost, right? Right, and that's pretty pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, now how do we? It's almost like <laughs> fire that we have. It's like, well, like, oh, I, I can't put it over there. It's gonna burn my house down. What do I do with this? You know, um, I didn't thought about quantum computing with AI. Huh. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's, that's wild. That's probably the next big step. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking with my train here that <laughs> once AI gets to uh, that that level of the, what they're calling a generative AI, you know, where bottom tier AI is smarter than your smartest yeah. human, right? Once that tier becomes exposed, <laughs> you know, that's when it's ready for quantum yeah. computing. Yeah, when you're just burning burning up chips just because the programs are getting so large, right? They, yes. You got to make that step. Got to make that step. Yeah. It's, you're, we're be, we'll be forced to make that yeah. step. Yeah. So at that point, wow. Yeah, who knows? I, yeah, who knows? <laughs> like, I, you can't, and you know, the thing is like, we'd like to say, uh, well, I won't be here when that happens. But, um, like I said, I, you kind of said 20, or I said 20 years, and you were like, nah, maybe sooner. I was like, yeah, you could be. <laughs> but I don't, there's a lot out there that says, you know, technology kind of doubles. Mm -hmm. More is, yeah. And, uh, yeah, more, yeah. Is it seven years it doubles? Every, yeah. Uh, you know, that's a pretty amazing to think about. It's that, amazing. You know, even where, where we'll be at the, you know, 2030, what, what's going to be going. Right. Going and I really think that mimics like all of evolution in general. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it does. Because yeah. things, things go slow for a while yeah. and all of a sudden there's an explosion. Like I think I've mentioned the Cambrian explosion. We're going yeah. through this huge explosion of life. Yep. You know, there's all kinds of that. There's all kinds of animals, but as we're going to die off, mm -hmm. you know, we're still going to be left with certain well, things. And back to kind of even managing people, like, I mean, we talk about momentum all the time, mm -hmm. right? Um, yes. And I do some nonprofit work, and uh, man, the, the way I judge a nonprofit is momentum because they all want to do, go, go, to do great things, uh, but if they don't have that momentum, it's just never going to yeah. get there. Yeah. And a technology is very similar. Of, I mean, as soon as it starts getting latched on and into our lives, yeah. Then it's kind of an uncontrollable beast that that goes right. But right. you know, cell phones took years before right. they were to a level that we integrated it into our lives. Right. Uh, now, where you leave home and you don't have your cell phone, <laughs> there's psychological disorders about leaving your cell phone. Mm. And uh, yeah. I can't remember what it's called. There, some people get really freaked out when their battery goes low on their cell phones now. Yeah. Right. And because yeah. it's part of their life and uh -huh. 20 percent <laughs> i think it's better if my cell phone's off so <laughs> exactly right and my thing is like oh you know well if it goes out it's better for my battery yes <laughs> yeah. yeah you gotta let that happen yeah. you just leave it in the truck for a while yeah. oh, but so. I, I you mentioned something that uh, i had wanted to ask you yeah you know uh or talk about at least and you just gonna glossed over it like nothing you, you said you do some nonprofit work so <laughs> i have to convince people i have a day job <laughs> so this some i mean how many boards are you on 
got it. The one I'm on one for work, so I don't usually count that one. It's not a big commitment. So uh, I'm involved in Boy Scouts. That's not really a board. Um, I think there's six that I do with. Um, and again, that's kind of the same. It's, it's that entrepreneurial idea, right? Yeah. You get involved in one. Um, and you're able to make a difference and you're able to learn. I mean, I've gotten way more out of all of these than I have ever put in. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you kind of see another need or another gap and you say, Hey, you know, can you help us? Yeah, I can, I yeah. can do that. Yeah. Um, and especially in Midland, Mid- Midland's really poor, I guess, in Midland is, is very unique. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I've been in some meetings where they're like, Oh, it's always the same people in the same meeting, just a different place, you know, and or a different topic. And, um, I think that's true a little bit, but as soon as somebody raises their hand in Midland and says, I want to help, I mean, you're, you're in all of the meetings <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's really neat. And I, I am super excited. We're see, starting to see a lot of younger product getting involved yeah. um, in Midland. Um, and that's changing everything. They're bringing ideas and energy mm-hmm. and, and resources to community problems. Mm-hmm. And, and that's super exciting to watch. Absolutely. So, and that's part of the, the culture change here, here in mm-hmm. the area, right? Because from a demographic level, yep. Midland is young than most other cities. By a couple of years, which yeah. is a lot. Yeah. We're younger than Austin, uh-huh. younger than Dallas, yep. you know, which is, is I, I I wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't have guessed that. But again, once you're told that, then you go to a restaurant, and you're huh. like, I'm the oldest guy in here. Like, <laughs> I didn't think I was that old yet. I was really hoping that wouldn't happen for a little What while. happened? <laughs> very true. Very so. true. But that that's a that's a positive thing. I always see the positive, right? You know, that younger more energy, more uh, innovative. Yes. You know, but and as especially again, we kind of talk, started talking about problem solving, but that's all nonprofits really need. They don't, you know, there, there's some awesome people that work in our nonprofits that have a ton of energy and will go do whatever needs to be done. Yeah. But if somebody can come in and say, Hey, let's think through the problem. Let's, let's make some decisions. Let's have a plan. Um, that's all you need to do as a board member. That's kind of your job. And it's awesome to sit down and have a meeting about, hey, this is what we need to do and come back in a month and say, okay, we did it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Great work. And we, we solved the problem and um, all they need is a little kind of direction and, and some and little innovation. Again, if you're in the weeds every day, and sure. day to day, it's hard to see. For sure. Uh, and, you know, good board members come in and say, hey, have you thought about this or, right. you know, look at this this way or whatever and, and then let the good people go do what they do. So. Right. So. Well, that's, that's, that's commendable that you're, you're involved so much in the community. Yes. Um, well, like I said, I, I get way more out of it than I put into it. Um, and that's, it's, it's yeah. not selfish, but you know, every time I say, I want to go with the, this group and we're going to go do great things. Uh-huh. A year later, I'm like, man, all those people helped me out a lot. You know, <laughs> that, that, I think that's a, that's a very healthy perspective to have. So and I, I just I mean, think that's Midland in general. Like, yeah. um, if you're involved and active, everybody wants to help you. And, mm. and it's a very unique situation in Midland that that, that happens. Right. Um, it happens in the business world too. So yes, it's, it's very unique. Um, it almost it becomes contagious. It, it very much. I mean, so. that's that's the thing. That's what's yeah. going on. It's it's a circle for sure. Yes. If you help me. I'm going to help this person. We'll, we'll figure it out at the end. Keep paying it forward. Yep. Exactly. Keep paying it forward. And I, and I think well, I just thought about that. Well, maybe because this area has been so blessed for so long, you know, where you know there's a lot of money here. Mm-hmm. And people with, with, with good hearts that want to help, you know, but we are uh, by the, the population. Yes. Right. Like, who else do we help? Like, well, you know, yep. but I think that uh, there's lots of room for growth still uh, because we have that community mindset, I guess, mm-hmm. without another way to say it. It's a uh, that's where you're you're seeing a lot of uh, the synergy. Yes. You know, with each other. Um, and oh, man, I'm glad that you're a part yep. of it. I tell everybody, I feel like if, if Midland had more water, we would build a moat because we, we really do take care of our own, but uh-huh. it's kind of, and I, I think Odessa is becoming part of that too, by the way. Yeah. Um, but we are kind of out here by ourselves mm-hmm. and we, we have to take care of each other. Right. Um, and it's, it's, it's made that culture. Um, you know, just a side story. I've done some really dumb stuff in my life, but I used to test engines up north and I spent some time in Fairbanks in my engineering outsider looking into Fairbanks. Most people in Fairbanks are introverts and they're in Fairbanks because it's kind of that neat environment. Yeah. But they, it's a very close knit community. Mm-hmm. And if anybody has a problem, they're on, but you don't see just people hanging out talking, but you know, if mm-hmm. anything happens in Fairbanks, they're there. I think it's probably the closest city I've seen to Midland because it's, they're on an Island. They're by themselves. They're, they're separated. And no matter, 
yep. like you or don't like you, you're still my neighbor and we got to get through this. Gotcha. And, and uh, it's a, I think that's how Midland is. Hey, absolutely. we're here. Let's, let's make the best of it. Let's, you know, grow and progress as we go. For sure. So and it's a really neat environment. I agree with that. Um, one of the first podcasts we ever did, uh, we interviewed uh, Jerry Morales, uh-huh. right? And he was telling us a story. You know, we we're just just coming out of COVID. Yeah, like we're still in it technically, but you know, it's at the later parts of it. And, and he said a, a story that one of his competitors ran out of chips. Mm-hmm. He called Jerry. He says, "Hey, uh, hey, man, we ran out of chips. Would you have any extra?" Said, Absolutely. Yeah. I'll send mm-hmm. you a couple boxes right over. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Because his thinking is, everybody has to get through this. Yep. Right? We have to get through this together. Because if businesses start failing and dying off, well, that's not good for anybody. Yep. Right? So that that mentality right there, you know, that I already had a lot of respect for, for Jerry. Very and, much. And, and, you know, at that point, I'm like, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, I get that. That's... Yeah, like I said, that's, that's how we do it. That's how um, we do it. Especially when you have business people come together in the nonprofit world, you know, Outside of Midland, that can be real, you know, argumentative and contentious kind of. But in Midland, you know, I sit across from competitors all the time at nonprofits. And we work together. We do stuff. We figure it out. Yeah. And again, if we have problems, we call them up and figure it out. Right. <laughs> like it should be. Like it should be. It should be. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I think that's that's the, that's the area too. Mm-hmm. I think why it works, like because of the relative level of authenticity we do have. Yes. Yes. You know, as a collective. Yeah, and I think that has, it goes a long way. Yes. Um, so, well, I yeah. did have one more yeah. question I want to ask before we, we rolled up here, but and you had mentioned this, touched on. You went to a conference uh, for for actually I went to NAPE. It was NAPE, um, okay. and there's a, a couple because um, that it, and again that it was very eye opening to think about you know just seeing an analysis of oil properties, how they're integrating AI into that. Mm. That was super neat mm. to see. So yeah, that was that was a really neat conference where they practical use for it okay yeah so when you really? first thought okay there's if it yeah. can work in that environment yeah because it sure it can work because it that's pretty ambiguous also it is mm-hmm. you know how do you evaluate it and do the math and the financials there's and, a lot to it yeah there's so a lot there, of there, people start to use it in that aspect which was pretty eye-opening like i said that was pretty innovative yeah so the, yeah there was a company that uh, talked to the owner for i don't know maybe an hour <laughs> it was just like okay how do you do this like i kind of like your your astrophysics that in Denver, yeah. right? Okay, just talk. I don't, just talk. I don't have a question. I don't know what to ask. What yeah. <laughs> no, uh, but there was a point where uh, I think you got recognized for hitting a certain number and you didn't believe it. That's oh, team. oh, yeah. I told you that story the other day. Um, yeah, so ACS is, again, I keep saying small company. I need to stop. Um, so, again, we, we really have done some really neat things as a small company. Um, and so we meet as a uh, Ingersoll Rand dealer. Um, twice a year. Um, so there's about 21 independent Ingersoll Rand dealers. Um, Ingersoll Rand does a great job of, you know, bringing us together, educating us. This is what they're doing. Here's warranty problems and what we're doing. There's promotion, here's sales, here's product knowledge. Um, so it's a super innovative or uh, integrated process. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of the owners are, have been there for 20, 30, 40 years now. And so yeah. it's a really neat group of people that really know the business and so again, I started going as not knowing anything. Right. Uh, so we joined that group when we expanded um, in 2020, and so we were. In, it was February. We went to the Ingersoll Rand conference. The guys from Ingersoll Rand tried to start off with kind of an icebreaker, and he said, "I'm going to put up numbers on the board on the projector, and I want you all to guess what that number is." So they put up some number, and um, it was like how many of these really large air compressors the uh, one group sold, and you know it was, I think it was twenty three, and you know it was Michael Jordan's favorite number. You know it was real. It was a good icebreaker, um, and so the fourth or fifth one he throws up, um, I think it was six hundred ninety three percent, and it was the room was kind of quiet, a little awkward, and finally some um, ears saw Rain's next price increase as kind of a joke, you know, break, yeah, break through because <laughs> of inflation, and it's not that far off it feels like, but. And it was just silent. And it was, number one, it was a very specific number. Yeah. And with a percentage behind it. And everybody was trying to figure out what it was. And after a long pause, awkward pause, the guy up front flipped the screen and it said ACS's growth since 2020. And the room was completely silent. I was sitting with my VP of operations and our, our lead salesman. And we just looked at each other going, there is no way that is right. And the guys behind us was like, I want to see the numbers. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. like no Showing one in the, the car room, including myself, believe any of those numbers. 
Um, but that's what we do. I mean, that's that's been the, the path we've been on. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, team's been doing cuttings every day. Uh, but to have Ingersoll Rand come in and say, and so, and I actually went up and talked to the guy afterwards. I was like, how many times did you check that? He's all probably 20. I couldn't mentally get over the number. Wow. Like I, I he's, he's, I had a mental block. Every time I saw that number, I wouldn't check my math. Yeah. Uh, but again, that's, that's, the that's the fun part of entrepreneurship. And yeah. you know, that honestly is worth like any better than any award or anything yeah. we've gotten because we got to go back to the team and say, Hey, this is your work. This is how it was recognized. Yeah. You stunned. There's probably a hundred people in the room. You stunned a hundred people the entire room. that know a lot more than we do that have been doing this longer than we have. And they were just silent in awe yeah. of y'all's work. So it was, it was a really neat little tidbit to bring back to the team. And uh, we talked about it of, I got, you know, some of these guys have been doing this and know the business yeah. and they were just jaw dropped. How no that, words. Right. How, <laughs> how could you, how would you do that? How yeah. You, you know, I can, yes. you know, right. It was like, I've been doing this for 20 years. Longer. I've never hit anything close to that. Yeah. What are you guys doing over there? Yeah. You know? And it's really funny. They all ask and um, the funniest part is, is that the oil field uses kind of small air compressors and we sell a lot of small air compressors. Most of their business is larger air compressors. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them now are like, well, how do I sell smaller? <laughs> Maybe yeah. there's something it's, to this. That's key. <laughs> it's usually the other way around. Right? Yes. Go big, go big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big projects, big, you know, uh-huh. good customers, big customers. Right. And yeah. Right. So it's been, but I think that's one of the biggest kind of achievements. And, and again, it, it, it kind of went un, unrecognized um, until the, the rest of my team got back and we talked about how awkward that was. Oh, it was yeah. And he probably did a dozen of those numbers, but that was the only one everybody was like, no. Well, I mean, I think that speaks a lot to uh, how you've led your team. Thanks. Yeah, and thanks. Uh, you've grown to five companies. You, are there any more in the pipeline? Well, um, I told you we released our roadmap. And um, again, you know, kind of how I judge my team. Um, I think there's 52 things on our roadmap that we want to do in the next a little over two two years, about two years. And, you know, some of them are kind of, oh, hey, go do this. But some of them are make a new department. Uh, so the the accomplishment was we presented it yesterday. We actually went through a budget first and then we went through this and the team kind of saw, okay, yeah, I can see that light up in the budget and here, here it is on the roadmap. So they did a really good job of that. And then I kind of walked through them all real quick and any questions? No, we'll get your response a couple days. Was it like, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't like, oh my gosh, or, you know, they're just like, yeah. Nah, it's and, we, and cause again, we're kind of talking about them. Yeah. It was the first time I th- we put them all in the same list yeah. uh, in a while. Um, yeah, the team was like, yeah, that's not a big deal. We'll see what we can do. So that's a beautiful place to be. Yeah. And I said, I was, okay, that, I can walk away now. <laughs> and I'll go do what you know to do. Yeah. <laughs> is somebody going to tap me soon? I'm waiting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, cool. well, well, Brian, if somebody's in need of a, of a compressor or, you know, what, yeah. what do you offer and how they can get a hold of you? Um, we, uh, the, the easiest way to describe our company is we're, we're kind of just like an equipment car dealership. So, uh, we have got a parts department, we sell equipment, we've got a service department. Um, we actually just started a fabrication group. So we're able to put our units on a skid and do some instrumentation and do some plumbing and some kind of unique things for our customers. Um, and then we have a rental department. So, oh, okay. um, we do air compressors anyway, anywhere from half a horsepower to 600 horsepower and just about anything in between. Uh, we do electric, which is the Ingersoll brand brand, which has been a great partnership and a great brand for us. Um, we also do the Bobcat, which is diesel driven, um, portable like a trailer that you see at a construction site. Yeah. Um, and then we do those in all of our locations. And uh, we opened up our Carlsbad branch in April and working through that, um, the Bobcat uh, ground maintenance group came to us and said, we've been looking for a dealer in Carlsbad for years. Do you want to do that? So now we do Bobcat equipment, which right. is the tractors, mowers, um, UTVs and some small equipment. And then we can rent skid steers and excavators. Okay. So we have a whole fleet of, of that type of equipment, which is yeah. new for us in, in car now. So, yeah, awesome. So, not just air compressors. Not just air compressors. And we do generators too. I, did, I always forget that. We do generators. We've got a, um, Bobcat makes a great generator brand. Um, and we've actually got some good um, relationships with people that make some natural gas generators now. So we're getting into that business. Okay. Um, especially in the oil field, which has been really good. Yeah. So yeah, very interesting. Lots of changes going on. Well, it's just growth. Uh, yeah. And the, the Bobcat equipment's a really, I think that's 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 how you grow. Is they came to us and said, "Hey, we know you. We 
we've seen what you're doing and and again it's kind of like momentum so right you know when people start approaching you that, that's a great way to say okay hey we're doing this right yes so yes so it's, it's almost like uh, when you're building that snowball the bigger it gets yeah. it just kind of attracts yes. more and more it collects more it and makes more it, it makes it easy once it gets bigger and moving right right yes right. so that that was a, a really neat thing they've been work with they're training our team and training us on the products and the service and on the parts side of it it's awesome so that's they've been a great partner so well awesome brian so, I, yeah i'm not free time here with us anytime this Man, is fun this is fun much. right yes yeah. sir <laughs> you gotta do it again uh, <laughs> later on when the ai <clears throat> we'll see where ai yeah. takes us right? <laughs> when i figure out how ai works I'll there you back. go we'll come back. Back. love it love it <laughs> all right well uh thank you very much and you know one more one more thing yep to the listeners out there entrepreneurs and or they're doing great they just don't know how what to do they need some words of the career what, what's your or a last word for entrepreneurs out there use your network it, it um, growing a company is hard I think everybody has an opinion and the more you get the more you can kind of form your own entrepreneurship is really about just just not giving up and solving the problem uh, um, and you can't do that by yourself so using your network like I said I've got a whole list of people hey, I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> can you help me out yeah um, and that's that's how we grow so you know surround yourself with people that can help you get to where you want to be and, and you uh, I think a lot of people surround themselves with people but then they're kind of timid to ask so make, yeah. make sure you're asking those questions and if you aren't around those people it's get involved get in involved. anything there you go um, again the people I've worked me for I've met and I are in my network when I need help through my nonprofit work yeah. um, is about half and and that's just get out there and meet people that yeah. can help you be successful love um, it yeah, because if you're if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong. I totally agree. Yeah, totally agree. Awesome, Brian. Well, I appreciate <laughs> you. you, man. Yes, sir. Good one. This Next is great. Day. Thank you very much. Yes, sir.